Good evening, guys. Uh, Garecore EDC here. Um, have a reassembly of a uh, Tucson TS-114 that I recently did a, uh, a RIT die job on. Um, the uh, end results are a little bit to be desired. Um, these handles were orange originally. Um, they've come out almost a black to a sort of a tinge of orange. Looks sort of like Mercada. Um, but we're going to go back with the assembly. Um, get some close-ups of it. Um, Feel free to leave comments, negative, positive. Again, this is my first die job. Um, I'm sure this will be a learning curve as I move forward. Um, try things differently. A um, few things as I'm assembling this knife together. This is a very simple knife to take apart, put back together. Um, Tucson pays extra attention to details. Use nothing but quality hardware. And uh, I mean, just awesome job. Make it pretty much idiot proof with different size pins. You can't fit this pin here because it goes here. So they make it pretty much uh, where anybody could assemble and disassemble, disassemble and assemble. One of the things I like on a lot of the two sons is this ramp in right here. I don't know if you can see. It makes it when the when you the knife when you're opening and closing when it ramps off of the ceramic detent ball here. It makes it so easier and f more fluid-like instead of a stop. When it comes on and off of that ball, it just flows off and flows on. Much makes for a much smoother transition. Something that Tucson does on a lot of their knives. It's very easy to do yourself on any knife you have. If you're having that situation to where the knife is sticky at that point of closing, take the knife apart get your little dremel tool and you can do it yourself with a minimal experience you just got to have the right tools um but again that feature there that i'm pointing to right there is what i'm talking about really nicely done um another feature on this knife that i think could maybe help it a little bit i have the carbon fiber version which is a little bit lighter than this one in hand i do not have scales but i was thinking of maybe um, lightening these up with like some quarter inch or, or possibly even three eighths holes, especially in the in the non machine side, as far as you know where your your liner lock is. Um, I easily add some holes to that and a few in this area here without taking away from the structural integrity of the knife. Um, just a thought process. Um, might do that when I get back to the machine shop after I finish healing from this surgery I've had. Um, sorry I did not get this video back sooner. Um, I'm having a lot of issues going on with my leg and my hip. Um, I'm supposed to go to the doctor tomorrow, so if anybody out there, uh, if you're praying, I, uh, I would ask you for prayer. One knife guy to another. Um, let's get back with this assembly. I hope that the, uh, the video shoots well. Um, I'm trying to set up so I can use both my hands. Um, First of all, we'll take a look at the scales before we do an assembly. You can see some orange still in there. It's almost like a blood red. Um, I did multiple dips, multiple different processes using water and vinegar and a teaspoon of dish detergent. And it just didn't want to grab. Um, this was the third try, the darkest try. Um, this took some time. This was about 25 minutes on a low boil. Um, it really caked up on the scales, the writ that I did. I, when I pulled them out of the pot, I was like, oh my God, those things are black. I was like, man, these are going to be so awesome. I mean, just jet black. But in hindsight, I think I like this color better. It gives a little bit of uh, distinctiveness to it um, to versus the typical solid black G10, a little bit of customization as, as you might would say. Um, but here we go. 
Uh, again, all the hardware is T8. Um, it's pretty much uh, idiot proof as far as putting it back together. We'll start with the bottom scale first and build up from the ground, from ground up. Um, we have one barrel screw here that has a T8 in the back side. It goes here, slides in like that. Then you will take the bottom liner that goes in the scale, slide it over, get it started, click into place and let it fall into the tray, into the cutout as you see here. Okay, then you see we have different hole sizes here. This one is completely in the liner, and this one is in the liner and the G10, and it's the same on the far side. Um, this one's partially in, and the liner is fully in the other one. Um, so when I was talking about two different size pins here on this backspacer you can see that we have a small hole and a larger hole i don't know if you can make that out on camera um, but the pins here these are the two pins if you look at them in my hand you can definitely see a different size the one on the right is larger um, so we'll take these pins and put them in their respective places Like so. Okay. And then we have the back spacer, which you can see the smaller hole is on the right and the larger hole is on the left. I really like, one of the things I really like about this is the really large lanyard hole. Really nicely done with some machining on the back, spacer, jimping as some would call it. Um, let me take this, let's slide these parts over here. Forgive me, I got to shift around a little bit. My hip is bothering me. Okay. So, slide this down over that, like so. Not putting any oil on these particular pieces because they're not wearing parts. There is no movement between them. Um, I'm getting ready to do some oiling um, on a few pieces. The bearings have already been oiled, so I'm not going to add any more oil to them. Um, but I am going to use some uh, KPL knife pivot lube. A little bit right here. Just a little bit. You don't want to get it too oily. Okay, now this is the knife stop, the blade stop, that goes there like that, and if you'll pick this up as a unit and take your pivot screw from the back side, slide it up through in place, like so. Okay, you take one of these bearings, which I have pre-lubed with KPL. And as you can see, this blade is nicely oiled. You can see the sheen of oil on it. There is no trash on it. Okay. And I'll slide this over that bearing. You can see the knife stop in action right there. And then take the second bearing, and lay on top of that. Okay, it's coming together. All right, now I will take the other side of the scale. And lay in place inside the cutout of the outer scales line everything up I'll grab the knife give it a light pinch a little, little wiggle
close the knife basically um just fitting and moving it around to make sure everything's seated okay now i'm going to take the pivot screw get it started right now i'm not going to apply loctite to this because i'm doing some experimenting with knives to see um the opening and closing of uh, how much it causes it to back off and loosen over time. Um, I'm sure this knife will do that. Um, and I will apply Loctite later and get it centered like I want it and call it good to go. Okay. Now you can see that this here is cut out for the shape of the pocket clip to ensure that it does not spin or move. So we slide that in place. Again, wiggling it around, getting it seated. Now these two screws are the same length, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. Put them back in place. Have this thing apart a couple different times and this particular screw doesn't want to get started sometimes it's uh but once it does it, it seats good okay looks like i want to Wiggle that around a little bit. I don't like the way that screw is seating. We'll back it back out. We'll take another look at it. I've had it apart a couple different times. They are the same length, but I'm going to switch them out just to see if I can get a better seat on that screw. I like that one better. I believe it might have had a little little booger or something in it that it just didn't like. Yeah, this one's going in smooth. I think it might have been a little little something. But all right, so what I'm gonna do? I'm, I'm going to just snug these up, but not really tighten them. Snug this up. Basically, three screws are doing this. And basically, you know, we have a, a knife that is together now. Um, sort of a burnt orange, black copper look. Um, centering. It's good. So I'm going to do a final torque. Tighten up just a little bit. Again, I'll come back and tighten this knife up and put some Loctite on it. Um, again, this is the TS-114, originally done in orange, done with red dye. You can see here, along this line, right here, it's still got that orange, but this was a very bright orange. Um, I think I actually like this better than the black. It's got sort of a patinaed look. I don't know how long that'll hold, um, but centering is perfect. Nice and solid. I mean, just closes easy. That ramp in I'm talking about with that little slot I was showing you it makes it so easier. Can't fail it. Two STS, two Sun TS one fourteen. Um, it's done by Caleb. Um, the blade material is D two. Nice mill titanium pocket clip.
um, overall length of this knife is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight and nine sixteenths, three quarter. Um, just love it, love it, love it, love it. Again. So guys, what do you think? Leave feedback in the comments below. Um, if you're not a subscriber, um, please subscribe. Hit the bells on. If you like the video, like it. Um, leave comments or questions or suggestions. They are appreciated. Tucson TS-114. One of my favorites. Um, I do have the carbon fiber version. Um, I believe this one will probably see more pocket time as not to put too much wear and tear on my carbon fiber. But I will be using both of those in an EDC rotation. As all of my knives, well, almost all of my knives are in an EDC rotation. Um, before we go, I want to show a few more things real quickly. Um, got a uh, Boker grip lock, see-through handle. Um, different knife it's a sort of a sort of sort of a gadget um, there is no liner lock on this knife um, it's different there is some on here on YouTube um, it closes with one hand spring shut springs open springs up shut springs open no trick. Just pushing with the finger. Now when it is open, the gripping action keeps you from being able to close it. When you're squeezing here, you can't close it. This action here, the fulcrum point keeps it from closing. You also have here on the back spine a thing that you can rotate and it locks it to where it will not close. Um, it also has a non-traditional um, pocket clip, which I've, which I've seen on some knives. I wish this was a little longer. It's pretty strong. Um, this being a clear version, this is just pretty much for kicks and giggles and to show friends. Um, it is, I did buy it used, but it is like brand new. Um, but the Boker Grip Lock by Grant and Gavin. Um, nicely done. Um, and the Boker Plus Jim Wagner Reality Based Blade. Nicely done defense weapon glass breaker has an interchangeable tip that you can make it like an ink pen in your pocket um, this is not glued on or sticky this is manufactured into the handle um, very nicely done many different holding techniques um, really aggressive blade um, this model come with a slide lock feature um, I bought this second hand and apparently the previous owner failed to list it as a not having that feature. Now, I'm not sure why. Um, the guy I bought it from is was not the original owner. He was not the one who modified it. Um, I'm fine without it, but it would be nice to have a feature that I can lock it open and lock it closed in case the, the, the need arised. Um, really strong 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 spring um, strictly a defense weapon press the button to close it I like it a lot um, and then last as a comparison for the Tucson TS-114 we're going to compare it to the Ganzo Rat 1 uh, Ganzo listen to me Ontario Rat 1 
Ontario would get upset at me or either Ganzo, vice versa. Um, I haven't had this one long. This one's seen no pocket time. Um, the one thing I don't like about this Ontario right one is this slipperiness. It is a US 8 steel. Um, really like the quality and the build into this knife. Um, really nicely done. Um, it's got phosphor bronze bushings um, on washers. Um, pocket clip is right, left, tip up, tip down. Um, just a really nice liner lock. Um, radius corners everywhere. I like the mil spec green, sort of army esque. Um, this is one I will not be dying. I'm going to keep this as is. Again, this is the Ontario Rat 1 in relation the Tucson TS-114. If you look at these side by side, I know they're totally different knives, but they're almost identical as far as in and out of pocket. Um, this one here, the Tucson, you can get a little deeper. Now, if you were to carry it tip down, you could go deeper on the, on the Ontario right one. Um, but I like tip up. Um, also, I like the lanyard option, and you have to be tip up to do the lanyard on both of these knives. Um, well, guys, that's it for tonight. Um, I'm going to try to get this video out um, for uh, a buddy of mine that come in. He wanted to see the results. Um, so, hope you enjoy. Um, give me your comments, feedback. It is much appreciated. Thank you, everyone, for subscribing. Um, it means a lot to me. I'm, I'm a young, old fart. Um, I was trying to have fun and show people my joy um, in God, in pocket knives, and EDC gear. Um, so what do we say? Go NRA. Um, feel free to agree or disagree. Um, and God bless America and everyone else too. Thanks. Good night.